All right. It is Tuesday, uh, let's see, the 28th of October, and I am really excited to be doing this. Um, I'm calling this We Talk on Tuesdays sort of a thing because Tuesdays are really a great day for me to do podcasting, to do webinars, things like that. And it seems to be that way with most people. Now, most of what I'm going to be doing here is just talking about things from the news and things that I uh, feel really passionate about and kind of sprinkling in hopefully a little education for you. And hopefully it'll be something that you really enjoy. So I want to start with today something that really bothers me. Um, if you notice that a lot of blogs use sensationalism to bring you in. And so I see these posts from people all the time on social media about, oh my gosh, I saw this, this, this thing that this person posted, and oh, it's fabulous, and oh, you need to stop using that. And some of it has some truth sprinkled in there. But uh, there's this really great writer, um, Ryan Holiday, and he's written this book called Trust Me, I'm Lying, Confessions of a Media Manipulator. And uh, Dr. Drew, on his podcast, he's had him on there several times. And the thing is, is that he's really talking about this PR machine that most of these blogs really are, where they create these really sensationalized and oftentimes fake scoops and they write fake comments, and they do this again and again to make their posts go viral. In fact, with Dr. Drew, he had talked about how he had had something taken out of context about something that he had said about fibromyalgia, if I remember correctly. And when he contacted this large, very popular uh, social media blog, and said, you know, you know that this is incorrect. They said, yeah. And he said, well, then you need to take it down. And they said, no. And it's because, I mean, we've proven through trials that we've seen um, that our news is no longer news. Our news and these blogs and everything, it's all entertainment. So what you get out there is meant to entertain you and is not meant to honestly always be the truth unless you're actually looking at clinical studies or things like that. And even those can have um, some manipulation. So one of the ones that's been going around is this thing about how if you have a child under age 10, you can't use eucalyptus oil or you can't use rosemary oil. And if you have a child under six, you can't use peppermint oil. And having gone through the essential oil training at Bastyr University, which happens to be one of the top natural universities in the world, and being trained by this 30-year aromatherapist who has trained with the greats and if you get the um, essential oil safety book which is you know several inches thick you'll see that that's completely false that the truth is is that if your child is 18 months or under you want to be cautious with peppermint because peppermint can drop their body temperature so quickly that it could send them into shock. So that's one to remember. You also uh, want to remember that, in truth, what was said um, online was really, I mean, very sensationalized because they wanted to push back against essential oils and make it really splashy and see what people would say. Now I can tell you from looking at 
the blog post that's been very viral, and also looking through what Robert Tisserin's essential oil safety book says, is that he says that these safety guidelines are for general public use. And that doesn't mean that this is the effect that every child under age six is going to have. And we also know that everyone is going to react slightly different to an essential oil because I've had people who can do 10 drops of lemon essential oil and it does nothing to them. They don't feel any effect of it. Or somebody that can put one drop of essential oil in water and drink it and have this huge detox reaction. All of our systems are different. Now, is it better to be safe than sorry? Yeah, there have been a few, very, very few uh, cases and studies that have shown that um, oils that are high in these chemical constituents can cause breathing problems in young children, those specifically under age six. And since it's happened to more than one child, then what the recommendation becomes for these oils is that you should be safe and make sure that you consider this when you are using oils on younger children. Now, if you have a younger child and you've used this oil before and their breathing has not been affected, then and you're using the right dilution because that's important too. If your child is over age two and they're not inhaling a lot, then you're fine using it. You know, people get all freaked out about this, but Vicks Baby Rub has eucalyptus, rosemary, and lavender in it. And so you can see that properly diluted essential oils on children, including babies, is going to be okay on your average child if it's diluted to the right amount. And so, you know, these blogs are looking for hits. And they're looking to be on the fringe and go after the big bad. But, you know, that's really what it's all about. How do you know what sort of percentage is? So for a premature infant, for like a whole body massage type application, the recommended essential oil is nothing. We don't use that on premature infants. Up to three months, it's going to be 0.1%. That's the recommended. 3 to 24 months is going to be 0.25%. And this is very teeny tiny. One drop of oil is so tiny and minute that people don't seem to understand how powerful it is. And that's where I think the problems come in. For a child two to six years old, you're going to do 1%. Six to 15 years old is 1.5%. And 15 years and older, you can the recommended percentage is 2.5%. And that's for body massage. So when you are doing body massage, how do you know what 2% is? So 2% of an oil in one ounce of carrier oil which would be two tablespoons, um, is going to be two tablespoons of oil and um, 18 drops of the desired oil. Most of the time, you're using one drop. I see most parents use one drop in one to two tablespoons of their carrier oil when they're applying to their child, one drop. And it does the job. So when you're reading these things, make sure you go out there and look for the real safety and the real clinicals and really look at you know, what's going on. Because again, it's all very hyper. There was one um, child in 2011, a girl, who used a head lice repellent lotion containing 11% eucalyptus oil, and she had a seizure. So now everyone is saying, oh, you've got to stay away from eucalyptus oil because it will cause seizures. Again, you have to look at the context. 
you have to look at the dilution rate. That's what makes me just so insanely mad is really there's just so much like craziness out there with these blogs and that's what that whole um, media manipulator thing comes into play. Um, the crazier it is, the more viral it's going to go. And that's how they become really popular. And so that's exactly where that goes. I mean, I can tell you that um, the blog, I'm not going to name the blog, but the one blog that was really posting this big thing about how horrible eucalyptus oil is, they posted that seizure caused by the dermal application of the over-the-counter eucalyptus oil head lice preparation. They put on there that it was a four-year-old. It was actually an 11-year-old. So there you see that was kind of a eh. They posted a link. They didn't actually post the information. So, you know, that's kind of interesting that they do that. You know, you kind of go, hmm. So that was kind of on my, you know, what's going on sort of thing today. Um, also, let's see, what else is going on today? So the iPod Classic is gone because they say they can't get the parts anymore. That's what the CEO says. But what's funny is that, so we have... Um, iPods, the old iPod classics, several of them, um, and one of the first iPod touches. Nothing works on it anyway. They do not support any of it. I look at iPods as being disposable because unlike an Android, like a Nexus, where they continue to update to the next, you know, from ice cream to lollipop, they do all of that. You don't get that with these iPods. So I find that really interesting that like there's a story out there trending that they can't get iPod classic parts anymore. You're like, well, who's using it? Because you can't use anything that you've downloaded on it anyway because none of it's supported anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's just really kind of crazy. I think that as a society, we have become this sort of electronic overload where everything is on our phones, on our wrists. We want to be more and more embedded into all of that. And I understand how amazing it is that you can make friends with someone from across the globe in minutes, which you could not do a decade ago. Things have changed so drastically. It's so amazing. But I just recently took Facebook off of my phone because I felt like it was taking over the moments of enjoying time with my family. And some of these studies that they've done where they've proved that if you're taking the pictures off the time, you're actually not going to have the memories. And we just took this fantastic trip where we were at, you know, the state down in California for several weeks. And on our way back, we got hit by Hurricane Anna along the coast. And there were some really scary moments in there. But when we were driving up the coast and we were watching these amazing giant, giant waves just crashing into the beach, and I don't think I got even one good photo of how big those waves were. But I can guarantee you that I can close my eyes and I can see it and I won't forget it. Now, had I taken a bunch of pictures, I don't know that I would. And I can tell you that I found an SD card in my camera because I you know, kind of stopped using the camera very much because I was using the phone all the time as my camera. And I found this SD card and started going through it and there were all these pictures that I honestly did not remember. 
And it kind of was this like aha proof moment for me of yes, we're not engaged. We're not really focusing in on what the real priorities of our life should be. And it really focused me in that what I had done by taking Facebook off of my phone for my trip was really by re-engaging with my family and re-engaging traditions and memories and things that are going to matter to my daughter as we get older. So the fact that I can't get my iPod Classic, um, you know, not a huge big deal for me. Um, also in the news, again, showing how unengaged in our own personal life that we are, I've seen several people that are, you know, news stations and things that are making this big deal out of the fact that uh, Juan Pablo, the bachelor, has uh, broken up with his girlfriend. And Juan Pablo, I mean, he was created by reality TV. He came off as a persona, and so I can't imagine that that relationship would have ever worked. Now, if you think about business and brands and all of these people that are out there trying to create this brand of themselves, that's exactly what I see works and what doesn't work. If you're not going out there as yourself and being authentic, you're not going to get the following. You're not going to get your truth out there. If you're out there as a brand character where you're not being your heartfelt self, then whatever you're creating is going to fail. That's exactly what happened there. It was something that was created that was completely falsehoods, and that was this sort of fantasy land of like going into Disneyland where you get into this car and you drive through, you know, Indiana Jones and the ball, the big rock is rolling at you, and but you escape and you go around it, which, you know, if you were in a real Jeep on a small road and this giant boulder is coming at you, you're not going to escape. So it's fantasy. And people don't, they're losing themselves. They don't know how to be themselves. They don't know how to build relationships. And that is why I think that the brands that we're seeing out there that are really growing, no matter whether it's network marketing, whether it is a retail store, it's brands that are getting that you have to connect in an authentic person-to-person -person way in order to really have this amazing, mindful uh, building process with your business. Um, you do not want to build a world of myths. Um, you do not want to build this big poetic nonsense that when people realize who you really are, they realize that it's very fictional, they're going to stop listening to you. They're going to stop buying from you. They're going to stop coming into your stores. That's how that works. It's like they just opened um, a TJ Maxx uh, last year up the street. And the very first few weeks, they had amazing products and amazing deals. And if you walk in there today, completely different type of store. And their sales have dropped. Well, that's because they didn't come out there as their authentic selves to begin with. They came out there as being something that they weren't going to sustain. And people have walked away from that because there's all kinds of other choices of stores that they can go to. 
people don't want fake anymore. People don't want fraud. There's enough bad things out there in the world that when, that's why people turn to social media. They're looking for something to connect to. They're looking for someone to understand. They're looking for a smile, they're looking for an electronic hug. They're looking for some truth. And people become very turned off by the fact that there's just so little truth and honesty and love and caring out there. That's why these really amazing stories can go viral so quickly. Whether they are truth or not, it's a big impact. And that's why people, when, these, when you come to these stories, you have to realize that it's not all truth. Um, I saw this photo today that said, um, no one wants to give up on someone they love. But sometimes we are forced to make hard decisions by extraordinary suffering. It's easy to judge or say never give up until you've been there. Eventually you begin to realize that life is too short and your own powers to teach, influence, or heal are limited. You finally accept that their emptiness, pain, and dysfunction requires more than you can give. Letting go. This is about letting go. And so, really, the, let's say for Tuesday, what I'd like you to take away is that let go of all of that falseness that surrounds you. Quit trying to be someone that you're not. Quit trying to attract that which you don't need. And for your own sake, be your own confirmation of truth and authentic self and dreams and love and just try to be better people and try to look to the real statistics and the real truth and, and look in your heart and don't just believe everything you read and everything you see because if you do, you're letting someone else manage who you are and manage where you're going. And that's just sad. So, hey, hopefully you'll uh, check back next Tuesday and we can talk some more. This is uh, Barbara Christensen. You can find me online um, at Facebook for Life, essentially. Uh, that is for if you're trying to find out more about essential oils. Um, that's the page of Life Essentially Healing Li Healthy Living. If you want to connect with me, I also have lovebarbarachristensen.com or on Facebook, Love Barbara Christensen. I am Bija Girl on Twitter. That's B-I-J-A-G-I-R-L. And I would love to connect. So have a fantastic week and get out there and live your truth.